Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Good night, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the return of Skeptically Speaking. Hillier, Yay! please give me a sound effect. Give me a sound effect, Hillier. Give me an applause. Sound effect. Thank you very much, family. The so much. My name is Clive Forrester. And as usual, you know, I'm here with my co-host and producer, Hillier the Fabry, the Sobers. We are the Yard of Skeptics. You guys are used to us on the radio on a Sunday. Um, yeah. the radio on a Sunday at the Yard of Skeptics blog talk radio page. But uh, for those of you who don't know, we also have a YouTube video series that has been going for some time now. It's now in its third season, the third year, that we've actually been doing Skeptically Speaking. And we have a range of different uh, episodes. episodes. If you actually check the... YouTube channel, you'll see the kind of episodes and the kind of topics that we deal with from time to time. Skeptically Speaking is a live-to-ear web series that deals with issues of, um, you know, faith and spirituality and critical thinking and a number of other issues which affect, uh, you know, the world and society at large. And it is run by the Yard of Skeptics Media Network. Um, Hillier and myself manage and execute this show. Today, and skeptically speaking, we are bringing back a return guest almost one year to the date. Dr. Michael yep. Abrahams, the no, controversial, the, the indomitable, the uh, erudite, some would say um, handsome and mischievous. Not really, no. The outcast, <laughs> the outcast, the pariah. Yes, oh man. my goodness. The pariah with a, with, a, with a list. You know, we talked about the rubber. <laughs> 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 Dr. Dr. Michael Abrahams has been stirring up trouble on um, social media as well as in his Gleaner column since the last time we interviewed him, and he has gained quite a bit of notoriety, um, you know, as a, a, a very controversial public intellectual as well as an advocate for the rights and protection of children. So thank you, Dr. Yes. Michael Abrahams, for joining us. We also have Pastor Cashley Brown who has responded to um, one of Michael Abraham's recent article, and I'm going to allow uh, Hilaire to kind of explain exactly how we brought these two together, how and why we yes, brought these yes, two yes. Uh, together. Well, on, 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 on that fateful day, September 7th, 2015, Dr. Michael Abrahams, you know, had the goal, the audacity, of, the audacity to have uh, to, to, to to write a, a column. He's a he's a he's a right columnist for the cleaner for those who don't know, um, in Jamaica. And it was entitled The God of the Bible is not merciful. And in that um, in that in, in that particular column, Michael started off with the definition of mercy or merciful. He said definition of the word merciful is treating people with kindness and forgiveness, not cruel or harsh, having or showing mercy, giving relief from suffering. Christians are in the habit of saying that God is merciful, a mantra repeated with much uh, zeal and conviction. But um, perusal of scripture, text, however, will reveal an entity that is anything, clearly anything but merciful. If biblical accounts are to be believed, God killed at least two and a half million people as punishment for various infractions and tortured many others. Apologists will tell you that these people had it coming to them as they had disobeyed God. But even if this were so merciful would not be an apt description to ascribe to the biblical deity. In response, Pastor Cashley Brown, who I believe um, is based in Mandeville. Not at um, all, sir. No? No, I am based in Kingston. Kingston. Okay. My apologies. My po um, I thought I'd read somewhere that you're in Mandeville. My apologies, sir. But in response, a rapid, rapid response by Wednesday, September 9th, um, Cashley Brown had, had was was accorded letter of the day. Um, in his letter, um, which was um, entitled, I suppose probably editorially, I, I, I'm not necessarily, this, this is not necessarily Pastor Brown's title, um, Abraham should stick to comedy and leave theology. Wow. Um, and, um, and, and, and Pastor Brown says, in his online column, the God of the Bible is not merciful, Michael Abrahams wondered how the literate and intelligent people of sound mind 
can read the Bible and proclaim that the deity described in his pages is merciful. He crossed the Rubicon when he said that describing God as merciful smacks of dishonesty, ignorance, or denial. And then, um, uh, then he goes on. He goes on later on to say, uh, from his extensive quotations and the conclusions he has arrived at, it is manifestly plain that Mr. Abrams has no regard for or knowledge of the dialectical approach and the treatment of the issue he attempts to interfere with. Um, and in, 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 in pushing back on Dr. Abrams' definition, Pastor Brown says, by its very nature, mercy is about voluntary slash optional exercise. In other words, if one does not have the power to punish, he cannot extend mercy. It therefore means that if one can only extend judgment but cannot execute judgment, he is merely a de facto ruler whose decisions are made by, by someone outside of himself. So that's just to kind of give our, our, our viewers a kind of introduction as to this debate. Um, I should add that Dr. Abraham's um, that particular column of his was um, was a subject of at least a hundred comments, most of them quite furious at him. Um, and um, he has since written a second column, um, which is extremely satirical. We'll get into it later on. But um, as a, as we explained, the, the the format of the debate um, is very formal. We're going to give each gentleman ten minutes. Um, to, to speak to the issue and, and essentially we've, 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 oh, the, the essential mood is God is merciful. So we're slating it in favor of, of, of Cashley Brown um, and therefore we're going to ask um, Cashley Brown um, to start up with his 10 minute defense, his apologia of the proposition that God of the Bible is merciful. Pastor Cashley Brown, you have the floor. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, I will commence this debate by stating that the punishment of lawbreakers is one of the most outstanding features of every known civilization that man has ever inhabited. And this exercise of punishing the lawbreaker is very pivotal to the establishment and maintenance of law and order, the absence of which provides the basis for anarchy and destruction. Without law and order, society cannot develop, it cannot prosper. So for a society to be on pillars of growth, law and order must be upheld. Without that, society is always going to be on the brink of trouble. Now, if you and I who are handicapped by a number of issues. We are short-sighted. We tend to be selfish. If we can understand that law and order is so critical to the maintenance of civilization, we must be able uh, we should be able to understand that God who is the creator of all things, who I believe has a greater interest in the maintenance of law and order, that this God would ensure that law and order is, is, is protected. But you know, as I take on this debate, I must confess that I realize that the challenges will be great. Because, you see, I discover that while 
a doctor, a medical doctor, would not be so eager to take on, say, a aeronautical engineer to discuss issue that surrounds aeronautical sciences. But the, 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 the same doctor would find it so easy to want to take on issues that are a lot more complex. He's not trained in the field of theology, but he feels comfortable to take on theology and to delve into complex issues. And that is one of the problems that um, emerge in Michael's article. He says a lot of things, but there are, there are issues that go far beyond the headline and it is until you have a certain relationship with the being that is being presented that you can understand the mind of this being for example you know um in one of the psalms the lord says he makes himself known to those who are familiar with him. There are some persons who believe that all it takes to understand the Bible is to be able to can read and have a fairly good understanding of language. But it goes way beyond that. The Bible is not your usual book. The Bible is a spiritual book. It has under current spiritual issues and you have to be at a spiritual level you have to have certain spiritual experience to understand some things that are written in the book and as the debate progresses that is one of the areas that i am going to be showing to michael where he came up short. I will now turn over to my good friend Michael. Your time. Okay, you. thank you very much, Pash, um, um, for your opening remarks, uh, Pastor Cashley Brown. Um, Dr. Michael Abrahams, uh, you now have the floor for 10 minutes. Yeah, the, thanks, Cashley. I really appreciate you engaging me because this is the kind of engagement you know, I desire. You know, people shouldn't really get, you know, vitriolic over this. First of all, with the, the article I wrote, uh, I mentioned the God of the Bible. I want to make it clear that I actually do believe in God, but the, the, the deity described in the Bible doesn't fit my perception of what God is. I, I believe that the Bible is written by man. Man is fallible. And a lot of what is written is really man's interpretation. We don't know. You cannot prove that it is the... Um, that they were all inspired by God. We'd like to believe that. We don't know what the motives or agendas were. But having said that, what you spoke about really a while ago really was about, I agree with you, punishment is necessary for law and order to be maintained. And law and order must be upheld. I totally, absolutely agree with you. Um, but you're, I think you're talking more about justice. I'm really talking more about the whole concept of God being merciful. Because we understand that merciful really means, you know, when you can, when someone is merciful, they're capable of exhibiting, you know, kindness and forgiveness. That is the hallmark of, of being a merciful being. And you're not cruel or harsh. That is how we define the word merciful. Uh, you had mentioned, you know, being an act, I wouldn't take on somebody who's an engineer in matters of aeronautics and aeronautical engineer, which is true. In, in terms of the Bible, I, I didn't know you had to have like a degree to be a Christian. Most Christians, most devout Christians who accept these things have no such, did no such course of study. Just to let you know, I may not be a biblical scholar, but I was a Christian for most of my life. Unlike a lot of Christians, I know I actually read the Bible from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation. I studied the Bible. I went to Sunday school, youth fellowship, church. Uh, when I was the only child in my school, a secular school, to the Bible study at Bible knowledge at all levels. I'm familiar with it, but back to the, the, the whole thing about, about merciful, what, what I fail to really understand is this. I am a mortal. 
and I'm into this thing called origami where you fold paper to make these figures. I'm, I'm, I know how people will react in reaction, in, in, you know, react to certain stimuli. Say I won't put my origami figures on the stove because it will get burnt up. I won't put them in the sink, they'll get wet. So God is omnipotent. When God created us, you know, he, he gave us complex minds capable of a wide range of emotions and exhibiting different types of behaviors which would inevitably include disobedience. So he makes us, we disobey, which is inevitable, and he drowns everybody apart from eight people on a boat. God knows that disobedience is inevitable. A woman sins in our garden, which is, you know, going to disobey. And to punish that woman, all women must feel pain in labor, even today in 2015. I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist. I see women laboring in severe pain, even women who are Christians. And I, I'm, I grapple with this concept of a merciful being exacting some punishment that will be felt meted out to people years and years later. If you watch the news and you hear that a child gets killed for the transgression of the child's parent, most of us will recoil in disgust. When, when David committed adultery, part of the punishment was to make a child suffer for a week and then die. When King Herod gave a speech and they big him up, he didn't glorify God. Christians like to say people get warnings before. Um, death. Uh, in, in terms of the story with Elisha and the bears always gets to me. He was mocked by children. Biblical scholars said there weren't all the children. There were you know, teenagers or young adults. Be that as it may, there was no evidence that Elisha was being stoned or hit or assaulted. He was mocked. He rebuked them in the name of God. Two bears came and mauled them, 42. You, you need to have law and order. And Christians often say, but you have children. If your child does something wrong, wouldn't you punish your child? Of course I punish my children. I do punish my children. But to tear apart people for mocking our prophet seems very harsh. And, and when I wrote the article, I'm not disrespecting God. I think God is, the God in the Bible is awesome, powerful, mighty. But I don't see merciful as being a hallmark of, you know, hallmark to, to describe God's character. It's like Usain Bolt. He has, he has lost a few races, but to say Usain Bolt is a loser wouldn't be a really apt description. Similarly with God, it's not that God has never been merciful. There are times he has extended mercy, but I, wouldn't, I don't think of the God of the Bible as, okay, this merciful being, and that's my interpretation. And I'm glad I got this opportunity to express these views because it in no way disrespects God. And I tell people the parallel is, for example, somebody can have a father and say, you know, I love my father. My father is brilliant. My father is responsible. My father is strong. But I don't think my father is merciful. Can okay? give me some big lick? But I love my father dearly. I love my father to death, but I just wouldn't use the term merciful. So it's not meant as a slight or a disrespect. I think that's it in a nutshell, basically. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Michael Abrahams. Um, if I might, Clyde, before you come in, I want to bowl um, the first question to, um, to, to, to Cashley. Um, and this is, I want to refer you, Cashley Brown, to uh, a column that was written by Ian Boyne on yeah. September 30, 2015, in which he commented on what he called a firestorm of controversy and outrage that have been set off by Michael Abrahams. His, he says, the, he said, the responses to Abrahams have been exceedingly poor, and there have been nearly a hundred online. My two friends, Cash Brown and Clinton Chisholm, have weighed in, but they have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Cashley's position was that God's putting away two and a half million beings out of billions actually demonstrates his mercy, exclamation mark. This, and he quotes, despite the growing wickedness of the seven billion of us living on the earth today, plus the scores of billions have died already, Dr. Abram is only able to single out just two million who have been killed by the hand of God, unquote. Now back to Andy, and so um, Ian Boyne's comment is, now I thought Michael Abrams was a comedian, but I laughed so uproariously when I read this. Seriously, Cashley? What, what is your response 
Cashley Brown, to Ian, Ian Boyne, a Christian apologist. What is your response to his critique of your response to Dr. Abraham? You know, um, when I read it, I, I can't recall being more shocked in my life. I was, <laughs> I was, I was shocked beyond words because I could not believe yeah. a person like Ian could, could, could commit such journalistic follow. And I immediately said, <laughs> yeah, because Ian missed the, first of all, the section that Ian quoted in his yeah. piece yeah. came almost at the end of my article. Mm -hmm. You can't quote somebody mm -hmm. less than 10% of what the person wrote. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you quote the person, and then you did not explain why you disagree with the person. But that he did. Is, but with respect, he did. He did. He did. I mean, he, in fact, he went to great detail. Went into great detail. I, I've only quoted part of it. Um, you know, I've only quoted part of it. I mean, he went into significant detail as to why he thought that the responses of all, not just you, all, that was a context, all of you was poor. And this is, it's the reason why I bring Ian up is because you said earlier that essentially Michael Abrahams is not really qualified to comment on critique um, this complex, and I'm paraphrasing here, complex Bible, you know, it has complex theology, and essentially, you know, him a doctor, him not a theologian, what am I deal with this thing for? Now, here is, here is Ian Byrne, who is, I think, one could say, arguably, a theologian, certainly somebody very learned in, 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 in Christian theology. So, so I don't understand why, why you're, you know, why you don't accord him at least um, some his, his credentials at least to no, he has no of, a, of credential as a as a theologian. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. He has never done any um, theological work, you know, in all his writing. Okay. He has never done any theological work. So, okay. so give me a second, so Pastor Brown. Are you saying that? even Ian Boyne is unqualified to comment on this issue? No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. okay. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. and don't, don't misunderstand me. Oh. I am saying, first of all, that I was shocked at Ian's um, comment on yes. my... Because he, 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 he said something which was completely out of context. Yes. Ian... Ian article, when he quoted me, Ian article wants people to believe that I was saying that because God kill, killed only two and a half million people out of the 25 billion right. that have ever lived, that is no big thing. I was never saying any such thing. You can't divorce what I said in that uh -oh. section from my general thrust. That but, 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 no, but if I might interrupt you a bit, um, Cashley. Yes. It, I, I'm going to quote you directly because yes. I, I have your yes. article in front of me. It yes. says here, but I'm quoting here, but despite the growing, the growing wickedness mm -hmm. of the seven billion of us living on the earth today, plus the billions who have died already, Dr. Abrams is only able to single out just two million who have been killed by the hands of God. Okay? No, 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 no. How how does one interpret that? You're saying he's only able, as if to say, look, ma, look at uh, look, a small quantitatively. Amount. This is just a, a small amount. Oh, yeah. Explain to us how we should interpret that. It, it it you should interpret it within this context. Yes. All of us. Yes. All of us, mankind, from day one, mm -hmm. we have been grieving God. We have been disobeying Him. Yes. yes and but, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Out, of, out of 25 billion, yes. within, this, within this 
environment of rebellion. Yes. This being only take measure against less than what I mean point zero 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 percent of mankind. It means that this God is not unmerciful as what Michael is trying to show. Because but, but, to but, 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 hold on, hold on. Stop there. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Remember, yeah. remember, let's go back to what Dr. Abrams actually said. Yes. Let's go back to what he actually said. Actually said. He said, remember, you know, he, 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 he was very specific. He defined the term. He said, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, Mm -hmm. The definition of the word merciful mm -hmm. is treating people with kindness and forgiveness. Yes. Not cruel or harsh. Okay? And what he said is that when I look at the scriptures, and he, give, he God has killed, he says, God has killed two and a half million people for various infractions. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying is that just that mere fact of killing for infractions, not, and he's not, he didn't put it in, he didn't compare it. He just said just that simple fact does not qualify as merciful. And it leads me to ask the question of you, Cashley Brown, what exactly does merciful in your mind mean? And merciful, merciful in this sense, where, yes. as Michael um, cited, these acts did not constitute being unmerciful. No, 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 no. But I just want, before I bring in Dr. Abraham, before I bring in Michael, what I want to do is I want to drill down on what is your definition of mercy. What is mercy? From my theological point of view, mm -hmm. mercy is the extending to someone something favorable, good, that he did not deserve. That he did not deserve. That he did not deserve. Okay, let, let's let's get to something. Let's get to something. 500 men appear in our court of law. Yes. All charged for a crime. They were all found guilty of the crime. Yes. The judge looks at all 500 of them. Yes. And said, Okay, I am going to dismiss send them 475, but yes. I am sending 25 to prison. Mm -hmm. Is that judge unmerciful? But wait, 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 before, before I bring in, before I bring in Dr. Abrahams and indeed Clive, yes. let me warn you that you are trespassing or about to trespass on my area of expertise, which is law. Okay? I'm glad, sir. So I just want to let you, I just give you fear warning. This is yes. my area. Okay, no. No, all right, stick up in. Mm -hmm. Dr. Abrams, Dr. Michael Abrahams. Okay, you have heard Cash the Brown um, address the question of mercy. You are very, you have defined it by, by virtue of a, you use a dictionary to define it. In your yes. view, yes. do you think that that dictionary definition is adequate or do you think there's room for a theological description or definition which you perhaps may have ignored or not taken into account when you declare that God is not merciful? I think we all know what what merciful means. It's, it's right, a but, word but, that we, but, we learn but from no, very no, but, early. But it's, a, it's a contested concept. But what I'm saying is that it's clearly a contested concept. You have one definition, which you have yes. used. Cash LeBron has another perspective. Okay? In other words, his perspective is that you get something that you don't deserve. Your perspective is that it is to treat people with kindness and forgiveness. So one is based upon getting something you don't deserve. Yours is, 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 is quite different. It's, treat, it's, it's an affirmative treating of people in a particular way. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm asking you now, do you think, in your view, that there is room for a theological definition as proposed by Cash Brown? 
the, the thing is, where where did that other de alternative decision come arise from? I mean, I can't mm -hmm. tell you where I get my source, what my source is. Yes. I, I, I really don't know where that one came from. Well, no, but he's told you. But, but to be fair to Cashley, he's told yeah. you. His 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 source his source of his uh, philosophy of mercy comes from the Bible. He's very clear. So did the Bible define it as that? But you, is, it defined, is it defined as that, or is it someone's uh, interpretation you know, of what it means? Well, where you both where you both join issues. No. no. Can you hear me? Yeah, Hilary, you're breaking up a bit. Hilary? All right, yeah, so... Can it be reconciled with... Yeah. All right, uh, uh, Hilary... I there's some degree of, of, so, yes? of overlap. Because what you were saying really is, is, is getting mm. something that you, you, you probably don't deserve. Mm -hmm. And I, thinking about it, there probably is some degree of overlap with that. Because mm -hmm. you can be kind to somebody and say, well, you know... I've been kind to you, you know, you probably don't deserve it, but I, I'll, I'll be kind to you. So I guess there's some degree of overlap. No, mm -hmm. my, my, as I mentioned. Yes, Cashley. As I mentioned in the article, that is why I began the article the way I did. I said uh -huh. you cannot, one cannot dispense mercy without him being in a position to also Punish. He punish. Actually, no. I agree with you. Michael, actually, I agree you with you. Tell me, Michael. No, that you have mercy. I agree with you. You can't tell me that you have mercy for me. You have mercy I you when you don't have any power to punish me. Is that all right? All right. An analogy, is, an analogy is this. Man. Hold on. An analogy is this. Yeah, man. I see. No, I actually agree with Cashley. Because a mouse, a mouse can look at an elephant and say, boy, <laughs> may I take mercy for you still? May, yeah. I, may I get a blind this time? Cashley, I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. That's true. But but so you have to be able to exact punishment to be able to, to offer mercy. I yep. totally agree, you know. You mm -hmm. and I agree on that. And mm -hmm. we agree about the law and order and the punishment. What mm -hmm. I'm saying is though, some of the things that, 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 that the Bible says, the way God operates, mm -hmm. don't seem merciful to me. So like so when a woman does something wrong mm -hmm. and he says all women must feel pain in her labor, even at twenty fifteen. How many thousands of years later? How is that? Mer how is that being merciful? That's what I, that's what I can't wrap my head around. You understand? Like when he give us, he knows we're gonna disobey. Then him drown everybody. I saw a picture on the internet of this Syrian refugee boy who drowned on a beach. That one child alone broke my heart. I couldn't even read the story. It traumatized me, cause I'm a humanist. I, I care about people. So when can you gentlemen hear me? Yes, 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 yes. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Right. So when I see that image of a little Syrian boy on the beach, that, 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 that image brought tears to my eyes because I feel for people. So when I think about a being just drowning everybody, and this being knew when he was creating them that they would disobey, he knew it. He is God. Mm -hmm. Even the hairs and number of hairs on our head are numbered. Right. So, so he knows that. So yeah. he knows it. We disobey, and one day I'm saying, it's true, man. On a top it, man, and then on a top it, on a top it. You know what is true, man? I can't take it no more. You know what is true, man? I don't know. Drown everybody, <laughs> apart from but, eight people on a boat. And that's why rock stone, even old man and, and baby and thing get drowned. So that, that's how I look at these things, you know. I look at it in a real way. So, but, for example, with Job. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. I was telling these gentlemen earlier with Christians and non Christians, we look at things like how people look at a glass as half empty or half full. A Christian looks at the story of Job as a wonderful story of the virtues of, of being faithful and being patient. I view Job as a disgusting story, how some people are used as a pawn in a game. You know, God talking to Satan, God said basically to Satan, look at Job, he's a wonderful, righteous man. Satan said, true, say, treat him good. God said, tell you what, you can fast with him, but just don't touch him. Same kill all him children, all him cattle, all him livestock, and servants. Human lives we're talking about in this as well. And Job did not curse God. And then God says, Seem still love me. And God said, Tell you what, um, go on, go on. You can touch him, but don't kill him. Sam so touch him. Him sore up and disease up. And him still never curse God. And God is like, I told you, he would still love me. Meanwhile, 
His seven children are dead. You I'm, I'm kind of stuck at the seven children being dead, though. I'm kind of stuck at children not doing anybody nothing, and God just said to say it. You know, you can't do you want to uh, kill them. I don't see the mercy in that. I, I just can't see that. I don't Michael, understand that. Michael, in, in that same article, you, you admit, and you also said it at the beginning of your... Um, exercise a while ago, that you know that God is awesome, he is mighty, he is yeah, omnipotent, he is omniscient. Yes. With that kind of admission, Michael, can't you go a little further to say God then must know a lot more than me, Michael? No, I submit to that, you know, I totally agree, I totally agree, but he still don't answer how that is merciful to kill Michael, a child. Kill a child to me... Not merciful. Finite, Innocent child. Finite, finite cannot argue with infinity, Michael. Hold yeah, on. But what, God give what, us a brain to reason out things. Hold on, hold on. One, one second possible. Yeah. Um, in, in, in the context of, debate, of this debate, you, you, you can't do that. You, you, you cannot now say that um, Michael is unable to understand God. When you wrote an... Uh, 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 a letter defending, defending God. So you, you cannot say God is beyond the, the ability of human comprehension when you have wrote a letter speaking definitively about God. I so, wrote a letter about God to a certain extent. There are things about God that I can never comprehend. None of us can comprehend. And we Yes, but you, you, cannot, you cannot conveniently decide that you are able to comprehend certain things, but Michael isn't. So you, you're going to have to directly respond that to the, the, the issues. No, you have to directly respond to All the issues. All depends on our training. Without simply saying that uh, Michael can't understand because uh, whatever. Right? So that, that's not clear. on our training and relationship. I find that's a common couple with persons of faith. Where mm -hmm. when corner with the obvious, they, they resort to you have to have a relationship. Uh, I, I don't buy that. It's a fact, I mean, something is either, something is either merciful or it's not. It's either merciful or it's not. If you watch the news and hear that somebody killed somebody's child because somebody the father did, it's either merciful or it's not merciful behavior. If it's deemed to be not merciful behavior, you can't just ascribe it to be merciful because God did it in the Bible to make a child suffer for seven days and die because his father committed adultery. To me, that's immoral and, and irresponsible. Michael, I, I don't buy that story. Michael, you made mention in your article of the 12th plague that God and, yes. the, and the Egyptians. Yes. Here is one of the instances that you displayed uh, an absence of one of the critical ingredients that it takes to go into certain issues. In reading those happenings, you recognize that there were 10 plagues and that they were executed over a period of time. Did you ever stop to realize that the interim between each plague was given to enable the Egyptians to repent? Do you recognize that? That the reason why he gave, why, why it was ten plagues. Because God could have destroyed them in one plague, you know. As you know, he could have done it. Why did he take, why, did, why do you think he took ten? Because every time he gave, and it is just like you and I, Michael, no matter how God tell us, say it wrong, don't go there. We will persist. Because uh, so we like to be disobedient. Have you given thought that those ten plagues were designed to allow the Egyptians to make amends after every plague? But no, but but, but how do you how do you distinguish that? Before you come in, Michael, I wanna know Kaki, how do you distinguish that, you know, from a, a, a totalitarian fascist dictator or a Don? who operates in the inner cities of Kingston, who says, well, look, Master, I give you, you 10 opportunities. 
you know, to cough up the protection money or whatever it is, and you never do it, so I'm going to burn down your backside and I'm going to kill her while you're putting it in. What, 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 what is the moral difference? What's the moral difference? I can no, answer no, no, I you that right. I can answer you that right away. All right, okay. The, 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 the victim of the don caused the don no moral obligation. Aha. Uh -huh. He has. No, we're coming to it now. He has. No, he has the don no moral obligation. Okay. So the don has no authority over him. So, so what is the basis of the moral obligation of people to this God? First of all, he is no, 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 stop. No, 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 hold on. I want to drill down on that because I think that is at the heart of the issue. Okay, mm -hmm. the whole question of how you construct morality. What I'm understanding you to be saying that mm -hmm. you believe in a kind of divine command theory of morality, which is to say no. that you're obliged to, you're obliged to, to obey whatever is commanded by God. And if you don't, if you do not obey, then you are in violation. Uh, so I want to know, clarify, because I want to, I'm going to ask <laughs> Dr. Michael Abrahams, what is his notion of morality? Okay, after I clarify, what is yours? Mm -hmm. What is your notion of morality? What are, where, who constructs moral obligations? How are they God. constructed? God. God is the source of morality. I know you, you, you have dealt with this in extensive articles in the past. Yeah. So I know, you have, and I, I'm not sure that this forum is is appropriate for it because we came to look at a particular issue, and we might be going yes. outside of that boundary. So, I, I don't want to No, explain. no, no, but, but let's focus. But God... Let's focus on it. Let's focus on what are, what are the, what, what is, what... You're breaking what up. That you are breaking on the, on, on the, the divine command theory of morality, which is what, which is what would explain, very much explain, of mercy. No, I just want to clarify or confirm is this your, your is what is good? Wow. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm not hearing everything you're saying because you're breaking up. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to clarify your notion or your mm -hmm. and this is based upon what you said. Your comparison between what God does and what are done in Tivoli God would do. Because my suggestion is that the behavior of your God is no different than a Don who simply um, makes demands with menaces. And if you don't respond, then he does you harm. You're saying no, because the, there's no moral obligation owed to God, to the gunman, whereas there's one owed to God. Now I'm asking you, on what basis do you come to that other than a divine command theory of morality? You got first that all, our first obligation to God is that we are not here by accident. Yes. We are here by the deliberate intervention and exercise of God who is our maker. On that basis alone, we have obligation to listen to him, to obey him. Additionally, mm -hmm. he is not a despot who lay down um, rules that are beyond our capacity and our ability to abide by. Mm -hmm. He informs us. He gives us the capacity to overcome weaknesses. So whenever we violate his laws, he, he is in a position to determine whether he is going to extend mercy or he is going to carry out justice. And what constrains him? Because does, does um. Does God have any moral obligation to people? 
Of course. Really? Yes. Oh, so, no. so, so hold on. So you, if you have a problem with God's decision, you can reprimand him. Somebody spoke about Job a while ago. Uh, go yes. back and read Job more and see. I've read it several how times. God, how, how Job argue with God. Job told God that God was unjust. Job told God that God was not treating him fairly because he never committed any wrong. Yet God afflicted him. Yes, but that was just words. That was just words to the wind. Can, well, you can, God can, a, him. can a human being, can a human being take God to task and actually punish God for oh, something no. that beyond is beyond that? Well then, then okay, so 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 no, so, so it's not the same. It's not an equal relationship. Is, so so no, God and man, God and man are not equal. Okay, so so no no. Just to clarify, are you saying that God therefore is accountable to nobody? God is accountable to no one. Well, what you've just done, what you've just done, mm -hmm. is invert and demolish any rational notion of morality. Any any rational notion of morality must include accountability. No. Now, I want to go back to Michael Abraham. Michael mm -hmm. Abrams, you've heard Cashley, um, Cashley's philosophy of morality. Could you share with us what is the, your philosophy of morality that leads you to consider that this God of the Bible is not merciful? No, I mean, morality basically speaks to the principles of, of right or wrong, good or bad. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're talking about morality. I, one example is, I mean, I think it's universally agreed that you shouldn't kill people. People like Christians like to quote the Ten Commandments. It's one of the Ten Commandments that we shall not kill. And another thing that perplexes me is, for example, I mean, it's one thing for God to, 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 to punish. I have no issue with God punishing someone for something that they did. I have no issue with that whatsoever. But when... God allegedly tells people to go and kill other human beings, they're not going to have a problem. Comes back to the Amalekites now. Yeah. Um, in, anytime you hear about genocide, most of us, with any morals about us, will object to genocide. It's a horrible thing. And yes. if, if God wants to wipe out people, I mean, that's another story altogether, but when God is going to tell people to go and just kill everybody, and the extra instructions were not just to kill people. I mean, man, woman, boy, girl, sheep, goat, donkey, everything. Everything. Yeah. And it was... Uh, it was Saul who now... They killed everybody apart from the king. The king wasn't killed. The uh, king was taken alive. And God was kind of ticked off about that. Yes. So he was chopped up in his, according to the Bible, chopped up in his presence. I don't even know what that means because God's supposed to be everywhere. So in his presence, I, I don't, God is supposed to be everywhere, isn't he? Everywhere? Yes. Anyway, so because the king was spared. God wasn't pleased, so the king was chopped up to pieces in God's presence. And that, that's, and that's, that's, I can't wrap my head around that. You, you know, yes. either you, tell, you tell a human to kill other human beings, including children. When I, yes. I used to be a Christian, and the thing that came back to me from Christianity, you know, the thing that I retained from it is to love others as yourself. Um, that principle is with me to this day. I'm a very loving person. So when, when I read something about God telling somebody to kill a child, how is that a merciful God? How, I, yes. I don't get that one. Well, tell me something, Michael. I have a quick question for you. So, you know, earlier you said that God was awesome and mighty and a bunch of other stuff. Um, I suspect that you might imagine he has, uh, it is with, within his authority to punish. What do you then consider a reasonable balance between punishment and mercy? <laughs> That's a good question. It's, it's hard to say exactly what would be totally reasonable, but I can tell you that what I read is unreasonable. A lot of what I read is unreasonable. Yes. Uh, it's a difficult one to answer. I, I don't think just killing people, genocide and killing our families is, is reasonable. By no stretch of the imagination is that reasonable. Well, if you were to stretch your imagination, what would be merciful? <laughs> what would be merciful? 
Mm-hmm. Punishment you know, of, a, of a different sort, even hardship. And God does that. There are times when God punishes people. He doesn't kill, necessarily kill them. He can deprive them of stuff. Well, why, not, why, they, not, why not deprive them of a family member or deprive them of their life? The, the family member part, you see, I have an issue, again, morality, killing. Yes. I have an issue with that. Uh-huh. I have an issue with killing. Uh, straight up. Okay, but, but then that might just be the weakness of your own stomach. <laughs> that, you're, you're correct. That may be. Um, but going back to the whole story, I mean, I mean, going back to the whole Bible itself, it's still... I still I'm not, cannot be. I, I'm still. I always say cannot. Yeah. I'm very open-minded. Right. One day I may even become a Christian again. I'm that open-minded. If well, my so opinions are not cast in stone, but yes. Uh, those examples do not present a merciful person to me. In a number of modern jurisdictions, yeah. in a yes. number of modern jurisdictions, the death penalty still exists. Yes. Exactly. Um, you know, what 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 are your thoughts on that? Is the exercise of the death penalty unmerciful? My thoughts are still evolving, and I used to support it. Okay. Uh, and I no longer am a supporter. So my right. thoughts are kind, of, are kind of evolving on that. Uh, is, it, is, it, is it because you don't I, think it's merciful? I, yes, Cash. I, I wouldn't say merciful. I want to come in here. Yes. I want, I want to say this. I'm glad you raised that point. Because we must never make the mistake and believe that the jurisdictions that used to are still. Um, carrying out the death penalty. We must never believe that the, 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 the end, the, the objective is punishment. The, 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 the primary reason for this is not punishment per se. The government believe that they have an obligation to keep law and order. Yeah. Well, let and me ask you a question let me ask you a question, uh, Cashley, because so even even in jurisdictions mm-hmm. where where the death penalty exists, mm-hmm. at, at least modern jurisdictions, mm-hmm. uh, they take great pains to ensure that even when they execute in the person, mm-hmm. uh, it is done in a quote unquote inhumane mm-hmm. and painless way. Mm-hmm. No. Let us say that you were God. Let us say you had the power and the omniscience of God. Mm-hmm. Would you resort to drowning people? Drowning is a is an extremely painful and um, traumatizing and very frightening way to die. Mm-hmm. Would you resort to drowning children? To to make a point. Personally, I would not. Why not? I would not because for me, it it it's a horrible way to die. Yeah, but, but give me a second. But but what if the, what what if these children live in a wicked place? They live it's in a place like Sodom or Gomorrah. Why why not drown them? I don't, I don't possess that moral authority. No no. It's but a, but but give me a second. Authority. Forget moral authority. They live in a wicked place. I'm saying that let us say that you have the omniscience, the power of God. These people are your created um, beings. Why not draw them? Why not? Why not draw them or, or burn them? That is impossible. I cannot be God. I can't think as God. His okay. ways are higher than our ways. He, he thinks personally. Me personally, there are yes. many instances where I question God. Okay. I cannot understand why God allowed a prophet like Jeremiah to suffer so much. I question it. I okay. don't understand, but guess what? My faith in His eternal goodness, my faith in His sovereignty, yeah. that He knows what He is doing, He never makes a mistake. These things allow me to just say He knows best. Well, I think it's the other way around. I think I think that particular position actually is holding you back from accepting some really hard truths. No. Hello, Clyde. <laughs> Listen, let, let me just share a little. Let me just share a little. I got baptized when I was 19. 
Okay. I left Jamaica and I went to Canada. I went to York University. I studied in oh. York. I teach at York. That was where the ideas of communism. I became a communist at York University. You know, it's hard to be in, in that era. I became a communist. Then naturally, I became an atheist. <laughs> okay. I was an atheist for 16 years. All right. Until, and then, until and then 25, 25 years ago, I went back and discovered the truth. That sounds like we have a question. Is that the case, Hilaire? That's a fascinating story. I, I love Cashley's story. I just riveted, actually. Hilaire, do we have a question? Uh, you rang the bell a while ago. Uh, yeah, well, 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 yes, but, well, um, well, um, well, oh shoot! So my page is 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 is, redo, is, is being uh re it's refreshed. Reloading. Sorry, All right, but no there worries. was one not not, but yeah, one, but but cash. Yes, sir. But okay. There's one comment which is not so not so com. There's one co there's one comment I have which is not so complimentary. Yes. Not so complimentary. It's, Ah, you're breaking up. Can I hear? Yeah. yeah. With, with, hear. All right. Uh, is it the one from Damien Williams? Uh, so, so let me read the comment. So, uh, or at least a part of it. Damien says, morality has always been a social construct or architecture of man. In biblical writ, even Jesus challenged notions of accepted morality, clean versus unclean, that were seen as divine command by the people of God. So um, I, I'm guessing Damon is, is suggesting that, um, you know, whether or not you think that, you know, there's some kind of divine framework for authority. History has shown us it has always been a construct of a particular society. It has always been a construct of man. And even Jesus, even Jesus was, was seen to have um, challenged some of the moral ideas that existed in his time. Why would Jesus be challenging moral ideas if they came from God? Mm. There, no, that, there is no truth in that. Oh, okay. No truth in that. That 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 is a that's a, a good, good question. Of somebody's that's a good question. Um, in inadequate theological thinking. Well, this this person is this person is actually studying theology. <laughs> no, if he, he would have known that what Jesus, what Jesus challenged was, I would even let okay, let's put it, moral issues that emanated from the Jewish leaders that were that were Who claimed, and the Jewish leaders, the Jewish leaders claimed to have got these moral initiatives or rules from Muslim God. The mistake when oh, so they were lying. Yes. So the Jewish leaders were lying. What's it? They were lying. Jewish leaders had it a lot of unbiblical things were not given to them by God. Yes. You know that they, 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 the whole um, literature was filled with uncanonical um, stipulations and so on. So what what came from Judaism? Most of Judaism is not from God. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, how do you know that? The truth is, the truth is. I'm, I'm curious. How do you know? What? what I, I said. You see, I want to drill down on something because my difficulty with with, with Brown is it. Yeah. Appropriate. You appropriate it and you instructs to try. Which and is outside the reality. I think that's a major problem. And I think when uh, you, uh, you, you're breaking up, you're breaking up. Sort of the, the yeah, you know, we might have to type that last question. It's still, it's still coming in and out. Your audio is still coming in and out for some reason. I can hear. All right, I tell you what, I'm going to come out yeah. and come back in. So bear with me. I'll to, uh, yes. Uh, all right. All right. No worries. All right. So, so we, 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 we actually we're actually going to be wrapping up shortly. So finish your point, Cashley. 
Earlier on, Michael made reference about the, the Bible being written by man, so not everything in it must be taken as truth. What is interesting in that argument? And I would love my culture to, to answer it. Who is it amongst us will determine what is truth, what came from God, and what came from man? Because Michael himself said there are certain things he has said, and others he don't. On what basis he can do that? Yeah, my, Kashi, that's a good point. And that is why I'm no longer a Christian. Because... <laughs> Because I say this book was written by a lot of different men and we don't know what some of the motives are. Right. For example, man is fallible. So David was a great king, a great man, but he was fallible. He go hold on a man wife and that was not a good thing. So some of these men who wrote the Bible, some of these books, some of these men may have had their flaws. I don't know what the motives were for writing some of what they wrote. And then after they write it and then they translate it and then when Emperor Constantine come and put some together and fling some out. It's, it's virtually impossible to know some of these stories were handed down from generations before some of these stories were too long after the fact goes and tell because goes and show to the world said these are those that have no right in the canon until you can do that michael you right. should none of us can do that none of us can do that but but we have common yeah, sense to know that killing a child is is is, is messed up Michael, you, we, we have common sense though. went to school, you went to school, you had geography book, you have mathematics book. You True. Have certain, all right, you get your math book, there are certain problems. Were you able to say this, this did not emanate from the source, this, so I am taking it out. Were you able to do that in any of your texts? All right, to be, to be honest, at that time, Mm -hmm. I didn't question like no, but even as a doctor now, mm -hmm. I give you an example. Even a doctor, if I read a study, even as a doctor who respects science, I question it. I, I don't buy everything I read anymore. I used to. I, I used to. So everything when I read something, I'll say I read it, I say this looks like it makes sense, but I wonder I wonder how valid that study was. I wonder what the motives were in doing that study. Because some drug companies they put out with that study and they have their motives and they drop some big money. <laughs> they know the drug will kill people, My but, but they bring it over to you and say it's palatable and it's a good drug. I don't know about the, I don't know some of these stories who wrote, some of these guys could have been on high grade weed. <laughs> why do you come to that, that, that fundamental conclusion? Because, because yeah, hold on, but, but, give, give a second, but, but Cashley, Cashley, hold on, Cashley, Cashley, you just said that a, a good portion of Judaism is not from yeah. God. Thank you, yeah. for a minute. You just said that, so I why... And why, I want why, to know how he knows that. Yeah. Why, and why should he even give any stock to what's written in the Bible, given that his people who were um, a part of Judaism who wrote it? No Christian wrote the Bible, you know. Everybody who wrote the Bible was, was, was Jewish. But Jewish, Jewish does not mean Judaism, you know. Okay, all right. Good. Judaism is, is, is an organized religious group. That's a, that, that's a different thing completely from the... Moses was was not practicing Judaism. Jesus, yeah, because it, is, it didn't exist at that time. I have, I have two things to say, right? One, in terms of this whole thing about God being merciful and all of that, I think personally a lot of it has to do with the faith. So when a Christian is devout, they will read these stories, and even it may look unpalatable. They, said to, they will say, well, you know, I have faith that God really knew what he was doing and I leave it in God's hands and God is merciful and I move on because to say that God is merciful is like a mantra in Christianity. And the second thing, Cashley, going back to my original argument, mm -hmm. I believe there's a God. But some of these stories, I don't actually believe the way they, went, they did. They, would, they, they, they went exactly what they said they did because I don't well, know the no motives of these men. Michael, you have to find, you have to be able to find this was. The, why you, you why you know it was wrong? You can't just stay where you Cashley, are. But some things we don't. But Cashley, if it's written by men, and Cashley, it's written by men. Men are fallible. So you can't just pick it up and say everything in there is true. But you believe everything in there is true? No, not everything is true. But everything was. We agree. Alone. See, we agree on that too. We agree on things, you know. Wait, Michael, Michael, listen. 
this is something that we need to know and this is what we need to do is not everything in the bible is true but god allowed everything that is in the bible was allowed by god i mean allowed by god because the bible was inspired men in the bible tell lies we see we see blatant lies men in the yes. bible but god allowed it the, 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 michael let me tell you why he couldn't demand write the bible out of his own interest which man which man would have right say man if you have one woman you think any, any 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 man writing out of his own interest would have right say man if you have one woman yeah because some men are some men are not very sexual I some see. men are actually asexual I some see. men are monogamous but he's a very but, small minority but man, but cashly but cashly but cashly but, 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 but hold on hold on cashly hold on cashly Mm -hmm. There's actually quite a lot of evidence where that is concerned to suggest that probably is man just write it off their own accord. I see. Poly polygamy is practiced heavily in the Bible, right? Right? Yeah, it's practiced heavily in the yeah. Bible. Yes. And, yeah. and and the way that the way that marriage is constructed, mm -hmm. um, men obviously have the upper hand. Clearly have the upper hand. And and women are one hundred percent subordinate. That that sounds like something that a man would love. Certainly, back a man back in the, the, the bronze age. Why would God set up such a paradigm? Why would God say, for instance, that um, women are unclean and they shouldn't even be in the, anywhere near the house? And and if if they touch something and then you touch it afterwards, you're unclean too. You think at that was true? Time, at a particular time of their their life. It's not, yes. So you believe that you believe that that is true? When something is happening. And trust me, he has a good reason why he said that. Really? Yeah, he has a good reason. What is that good reason? Do you know? And and, and and you can and you can and you can infer, you know, because let's face it, for for, for, for a woman at that time, we all know it's not the it's not the most hygiene time. If we in this modern age, it still has some um inconveniences yeah but hold on give me a second you're talking to a gynecologist here dr michael abrams yes he's a gynecologist yeah. and, yes. and, and, and yes. if, if there's anybody who yes. can tell you whether or not women dirty up the place when they're uh menstruating it's michael mm. God. michael probably know more about this I than said, I the said. in the bible <laughs> Right, but uh, we, we, we're coming down to the closing now. I sent out the invitation for anybody who would like to join. If there's anybody who is watching live that would like to join the discussion right now, feel free to click the link that I left on the uh, the YouTube page. Uh, any any closing thoughts, gentlemen? Cashley, uh, which which church? Which is um, what is your church? Right now, Michael, I am not really pastoring a church. You see, I have, I have some issue with the Christian Church. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, and I will come and tell you. It has one <laughs> thing that I cannot reconcile with. Which is what? The direction that the Christian Church is going. I well, don't think I can stop. What is the direction? It's the it, church in Jamaica. It's emphasis on money. Okay. It's departure from. The word of God and instead promoting man's idea. Okay. And the assertion. Just one, just one. Uh, Michael, just a second, Michael. Um, <laughs> well, when you did your degree in theology, weren't you like assigned to a church? Yeah, man. I used to pastor. I used to pastor. Okay. I and which church? Many years. But which I, church was that? Uh, which huh? church was that? Which church was that when you did? The Assemblies of God. Assemblies of God. Okay. And you did your you did your theology degree in Jamaica? No, in Canada. In Canada. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's go into the closing um, arguments. I think Hilary has a question soon. Um, I'm just going to allow Michael to start his closing first. Five minutes or, or less, and then Cashley. Um. So what I was saying is that the God of the Bible is not merciless. That's not to say that God is not merciless. I don't really believe that the biblical description of God is really God. That is my perception. Merciless, being merciless, being sorry, merciful. I'm sorry. 
it's, I'm tired. Uh, so they call it the Bible is not merciful. Uh, when you're talking about merciful, you're really talking about you know, you know, being able to be kind and forgiving, you know, not being cruel or cruel or harsh. And the deity described in the pages of the Bible, in in my opinion, does not. The word merciful doesn't exemplify that deity or that being. Killing children, making people suffer for sins or infractions committed by persons decades and generations before, killing large groups of people, telling humans to kill other humans, allowing Satan to kill someone's children just to prove a point. In my opinion, that doesn't really add up to some a, a being who is merciful. And being omnipotent and, and empowering us with complex minds, that being must have known that disobedience would be inevitable. And then to be killing us for our disobedience when he knew it to be inevitable, creating us, knowing you knowing you'd be disobedient, droning off basically the whole planet apart from eight persons on a boat. Doesn't really add up to a merciful being. Mm. I don't accept that. Well said. Cashley. Yeah. God made us and he knows that we are we suffer from weaknesses but he also has invested us with strength to overcome those weaknesses. He has given us more than enough information in the Bible and otherwise for us to be able to navigate away from wrongdoing. He warns us of the consequences of our action. It's not something that comes upon us suddenly. We know that if we do A, B will be the consequence. And having given us the information, the warning, he did not leave it there. He empowers us with his grace. He assures us that he is merciful. We therefore are obligated, just like any good citizen, the country says, don't drive your vehicle without a driver's license. Don't go and break the man shop because if you do there is a consequence when we do these things it is no hope to God to determine whether he exonerates us by giving us mercy if he does not extend mercy but carries out the justice that which we rightly deserve he cannot be called he cannot be deemed and merciful. The fact that, as Michael has said, that God has dealt with some people harshly. It's just, and I will repeat, it's just an, an, an insignificant view compared to the vast, innumerable amount that he has shown his mercy. When Michael says God is not merciful, is he talking about, is it this a, a, an absolute or a relative? What does he mean? Because God has always been merciful. He says he's merciful. Man chat all kind of foolishness all the time. <laughs> when Donald Trump said he's a nice guy. When, 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 when man really them say all kind of things. God is not a man. God is not a man what that he should lie. Like. Sound like one, trust me. <laughs> God is not a man that he should lie. <laughs> Don't think we can depend on him. We can rest that sure that yeah. he will never tell a lie. All right, cool. So we have some questions online from some of our viewers. Um, so Nikki is asking, and I think this, this question might be addressed to Cashley. So as far as the Bible shows, Satan is only responsible for the direct deaths of about 10 people. How do you view Satan um, in terms of his mercy when compared with God, who is responsible for the death of over 2, mi two million persons? It's, it's, it's amazing how people think, and I think that's, that's an exercise in the worst kind of, the very nature of Satan. The very nature is very nature. Means he can, Satan can't extend mercy. He has never extended mercy to anyone. He is responsible for every ounce of wrongdoing 
that has ever happened on earth. And I will leave it. I think that is clear enough. It is impossible <laughs> for Satan to do any right. He cannot do right. He has yes. never extended because he doesn't know mercy. He doesn't right. have mercy within him. Let me let me give you a, a kind of moral a kind of moral situation. All right. So, so for instance, you live in a society where stealing a car is wrong, right? Mm -hmm. which, which you do, right? Where you live right now, where I live, stealing a car is wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, let us say one day that you found out that, that one of your family members or somebody who lived in the community, a young child, mm -hmm. was kidnapped and you know where this child was being held, right? You know where this child was being held. Mm -hmm. And you had to drive to rescue this child. You didn't have your car nearby, so you decided that you were going to break into someone's car drive to the location and you rescue the child. This is exactly what happened. Now, as you realize, you know, stealing a car is, is illegal. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you appear in court and the judge decides that, well, you stole the car and the penalty for stealing a car is 25 years in prison and she's going to give you the maximum. Mm -hmm. Would you say that that judge, given the context, was merciful? While, while, while you might not be able to use the word merciful, because that, that was not exercised, but you cannot also say the judge was unmerciful, because what the judge did, the judge exercised his prerogative of, of, of um, judgment. But then, but then you, you, you don't have a concept of mercy then because remember the context that I explained to you, know, fine? Yeah. Given the context, won't you say that um, stealing the car, which resulted in the harm to nobody, but in fact resulted in the rescue of a child which was kidnapped, why would you still exact on this person the maximum punishment? You are forgetting that. Would, would you extend to this person some kind of leniency? Mercy is the exclusive preserve of the judge. It is his prerogative. Right, right, yes. And, uh, right. As if he and doesn't I, extend it, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have it. He looks at the situation and he, the judge, nobody else knows. Nobody else except the judge knows what this person, individual, deserves. So he looks at it and he says, this person yes, deserves but hold on. That's and not it. true. That's so not you, true. Can, so you, can you hear me? That's yeah, we hear you. We that's not true. That's abs that's actually not true. That's actually not true because this whole business. Because I've heard this being pushed by by a number of theists. You know that somehow mercy. No, the whole so, notion of mercy is actually built into the criminal justice system. That is to say that in appropriate cases, a judge is required. <laughs> is required. It's not just some. It's not just some kind of well, if him feel like. He, is re he or she is required. That is one of the reasons why you have a process in the criminal courts, as I was explaining to Clinton Chisholm recently, whereby, whereby I, I, you have a... Breaking up again. You're breaking up, you're breaking up again. But, yeah. Type that last part uh, here. A, a plea. Huh? Okay, yes. All right. So I, I, I think I know what Hilary is talking about. Cashley, mm -hmm. are, are you aware of um, a, a courtroom practice where just before the judge actually sentences somebody to prison, mm -hmm. this person is allowed to, to call a number of character references oh, on sure. their behalf? Sure. But 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 this is built into the criminal system so That's right. that mercy can be extended to the person. So no, so no. in other words, mercy mercy isn't just something that the judge can just dream up and, and decide that you're either going to withhold um you know or, in, or, or yes. dish out in, 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 uh, but, in excess. But in his life, mercy can be relative, mercy can be measured because the judge can look at the man and say you deserve five years. But his mercy, he, he, he can have mercy on him and give him only three. So that's what I am saying. It is the prerogative 
of the judge. Well, it's, it's well, hold on, but what, give me a second, Cashley, Cashley. The, 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 the truth is that um, even though the judge might make the final decision, mm -hmm. there is a societal idea of what will constitute a merciful, a merciful um, level of punishment given the context. And this is what I'm saying. So the context that I described to you where a man, you, had to steal a car mm -hmm. to rescue a child that was being kidnapped and raped and so on. And, and you successfully completed that task, right? You, you stole the car, unfortunately, but you did it in furtherance of uh, preventing the, 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 the... And all of those now will come into consideration in sentencing. Exactly. But if the judge gives you the maximum sentence, right? And ignoring, and, 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 ignoring the context, is that, still, is that merciful? Would you consider that merciful? No, if he ignores, if he ignores all of that, that the man did it to rescue a life, to rescue a child, if he ignores it and goes ahead and sentences the man to the maximum, that judge is not merciful. But isn't that kind of what God does? No. <laughs> Come on, Barbie. No, 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 no. Isn't that, it, well, 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 give me a second. Hold on, Cashly, Cashly, Cashly. First place, no, Cashly. Cashly. Hold on, hold on, Cashly. In in the in the Bible, it, mm -hmm. it, it is said that Joshua received direct instructions from God mm -hmm. to invade some city or the other. Yes. Um, and kill babies that were still in the womb. What did those unborn children do? Michael, I, I need to address this to Michael. Michael. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Michael, you made reference in your article to um Something that happened in First Kings 14 with Jeroboam's baby. You recall that? Yeah, I've got the references. I need for you, Michael, to go back and read that passage very carefully. And it has a lot to teach us about why God do the thing and how can God do the things he does. Because no, I understand that some of these people did some very bad things. Don't get me wrong, you know, but there's some an issue with killing a child. Here is a child, here's a child who was sick. The mother wanted to find out what was going to happen to the child. He went to the prophet, she went to the prophet. God said to tell, tell, tell the woman, say, look, the child, the child, go back and tell the father, King Jeroboam, that this child who was a baby said, the child will die, will not recover. However, this child will be the only one out of the entire family of Jeroboam. Who will get a burial? Because in him, God alone found some righteousness. No. Listen, hear the theology of this. How could God look on a baby? A baby. Yes. And compare his doings with grown men who were in their 60s and 70s. God, how could God tell a child? Say a child who is three year old. If allowed to grow up to, to 60 or 30, would not be as wicked as good. Yet God was able to say he found more righteousness in that baby than those men. When I talk about understanding theology, these are some of the things we need to understand. But God is the, able to determine. But what about the oh so so you're saying then in the in the instances where God instructed his armies to kill babies that were still in the womb. It is because God foreknew that these babies would grow up to what? Become enemies. That's what you're saying? I am not I'm not putting it like that. What I am saying, what I am saying, it is not always easy to determine why God does the things he does. But one thing we know, we know that God is a just God. He will never do anything. No, we don't. No, we don't. We don't. No, no not according to the Bible. We don't. Sorry. We don't. And so, Cashly, give me a second. And that no, is the right thing. It's a different story now. You are no. starting, you are starting no. with a conclusion. No. Well, like, no. You are starting, Cashly, you are starting no. with a conclusion and then you are attempting to mm -hmm. justify the conclusion rather than look at the evidence and then come to a conclusion. 
but the evidence that does not suggest that God is evil. It cannot, well, 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 no, we never said that was evil enough. Before, I, before I, we get to the evil section, we are talking about just mercy, right? Mercy. No, yeah. if if you are an army general mm -hmm. and you you are, you you send your army to extinguish the enemy, why would you tell the army to kill persons who are non-combatants, like pregnant women? Why would you tell your army to kill those people? It is it is difficult, and from our moral sensitivity, we we look at it as, but that is what again, and 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 there are times, you know, when I am not saying there, it does not um, pose some challenge to comprehend. I would never say it doesn't pose challenge, but the fact. Is. Why don't you work through the challenges rather than <laughs> rather than rather than stuck on the conclusion no, that you started no, at the beginning? That I just don't believe that I just accept it blind by faith. Yeah. No, I know that that is a thinking of, but I would love the day to come when you know some person stop believing that Christians and uh, um, people of faith are just this ignorant who, who don't need to to. To understand the, the inner working of things, that's not true. But that's that's true. not true. true. We don't take things true. blindly. Well, it's certainly true for some people. We investigate it's things. It's certainly true for a lot of people. Might be able to do that. Michael Abraham, look at the call. Look, look at the comment to Michael Abraham article, and you tell me, okay? If that was just not, not I mean, if you tell, if you tell me, that we're not hearing you. We're not hearing you, you really. Okay, well thought through. Wow. Just what that called faith prophecy. <laughs> and you know, to me, I'm sorry, but but they were taught. I mean, they were um, taught I mean, yes. Uh, you you use the headphone, Hilary. Use the headphone. Yes, on my circumstance. Eh? Put in your headphone, yeah. Hilary. Your volume is a bit low. No, no. This and my circumstance here. I have to wrap up now. Yes, yes. We wrap it up now. I have so. To wrap up now. So well, well. Thank you very much, Cashley. Um, for for engaging us in this debate, um, you 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 gave us practically ninety minutes. You know, we we had we went off to a late start, but thank you nonetheless for for um you know being a part of of this discussion. We definitely like to thank Dr. Michael Abrahams as well. He had a busy day, um you know balancing his his duty as a parent and as a surgeon as well. Uh, but he made it in time. For the discussion, um, and even though Hillier has had some technical difficulties, we we managed to persevere as well. So thank you both, gentlemen, for um, gracing us on on season three, episode one of Skeptically Speaking. This is definitely um, quite a special and monumental episode. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It was thank really very, very much fabulous. Yes, and Mikey, catch the big up yourself. May have to talk some more, man. Certainly, Mikey. I know you're praying for me. I know that. <laughs> sure will. Sure will do that. <laughs> All right, cool. Take care. Take care. Yes. Have a good day, Cashley. You too, my friend. All right, cool. All right. So um, I, I guess we're going to release these two. Um, our next episode, we're going to try to, to, to stick with um, Alternate Thursday. So our next episode is actually going to be two weeks from now. And you will definitely see the notice for for that um, once once. So I, I think we actually have confirmed an episode. Hilary, could you remind me what the next episode is, please? The next episode, what well, you mean? Of Yadi, skeptics or skeptical speaking? Skeptically speaking. Skeptically speaking, we're we be bringing. Oops. Type it till you type it. Still giving some audio issues. I think, I think lightning just struck him. Got no yes. sleep now. <laughs> right, the elements are out <laughs> and conspiring against Hillier. Hillier, type type the next episode. Uh, because we, we still have one of the plagues. Yeah, we still have it. <laughs> but um, you know, thanks again, Dr. Abrahams, and thank you for those who were watching online. We saw your comments. We didn't get a chance to get to all of them. But nonetheless, we are definitely thankful for, for your viewership, um, your continued viewership over, over the years. Some of these persons actually have been quite faithful. Uh, Damien Williams, Stephen Brown, um, they've been 
um, supporters of the Yadi Skeptics Network since the beginning. And we, we, we got some comments from Sean Major Campbell as well. We didn't get a chance to get to his comments, which were done on Facebook. But thank you. Thank you to everyone who managed to tune in for the season opener of Skeptically Speaking. And we are definitely going to ensure that we keep the episodes interesting and educational. Thank you for tuning in. See you in two weeks' time. Have a good night.